Thank you. Be seated, please. And grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I love a quote by a fellow named Oliver Wendell Holmes. You may be familiar with him from some classes in school, but he's, he's got a quote I love very much, and the quote is this. He said, there is an art in which everyone should become a master. The art of reflection. I love this quote because reflection, as I experience, when we take time for reflection in our life, it allows space, open space, to happen in our life so that God might enter in and bless us with all that he has to bless us with. But this morning, uh, we're going to talk about the blessings of his grace and how he graces us over and over again and fills us full of his gifts of grace. And so this morning, as we always do, we're going to take some moments to reflect on the greatness of God and how God makes a difference in our life and how God gives us power for living. We have a great God. There's so much to talk about him, but this morning we're going to talk about, well, I was thinking this morning when I sat down in my office, you know, have you ever guys taken Strengths Finder, that test, to find out your number one strength? I was thinking if God took that test, <laughs> grace would be his number one. Because we have a God of grace. And we heard about the God of grace in our first lesson from Genesis. How God created absolutely everything. And everything that God created, he said, is yours. A God of grace is a giver. And he doesn't withhold back one thing. Everything that he has created, he has given to you. Well, we have a God of grace. We listened to uh, our gospel text, and we heard again about the God of grace who, who gave to us, who gave to us his son, Jesus. And he gave us Jesus to come and speak to us words of love and to tell us that we matter to him and that we count and that he's going to be with us. And then he gave his son's life he gave all of his son. He didn't withhold anything, not even his son. He gave his son to us on the cross, and there he won for us our salvation and the promise that we'll be with him today and forevermore. God is a giver. God is graceful. Today, our topic is grace alone. It's a foundational principle of the Reformation, but more than that, as Pastor Chris said, a foundational principle of Scripture. We're going to celebrate God's grace. You know, the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul, teaches us in Scripture that God gives us this great gift of life. He's given His Son for us so that we might have life everlasting. And then He gives us the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit comes and fills us full of His gifts of grace. Isn't this incredible? Grace upon grace. So He fills us full of God's kindness. He fills us full of His forgiveness. He fills us full of His love and joy and peace and goodness and kindness. His might and power. God fills us with his gifts of grace so that we might enjoy the abundance of life. Without all those gifts of the Spirit, we don't have abundance of life. We're just walking around. We have so much to be thankful for when we start to think about and talk about 
the God of grace and his gifts. Well, I was thinking that there are times in my life where I take absolutely everything for granted and that I feel as if, uh, you know, sometimes I'm empty and sometimes I'm empty because I'm not taking time for reflection and maybe a spiritual discipline so that I can just become aware as a person that we have this incredible God of grace that I can celebrate in my life and experience abundance li- abundant life. And I don't know about you. Uh, I feel neglectful often. I try to every day practice a spiritual discipline just to appreciate and just live in the grace of God. And I think it's so important to take this time out in our life so we can experience that abundant life, the joy and delight that God wants for us. And so uh, just one of the things I do in my life to think about the God of grace and appreciate it is I, I, I need to stop, and I don't do it every day, but I kind of mindfully do this just with myself. And I like to mindfully look up to God, the God of grace. And then I think I, I want to open up to him. I want to open up my life to him and allow him to come in. And I think about how he's coming in and filling me full of his gifts of grace. And then I want to give in to him, give in to his will and his ways so that I might, if he could use me, to be a reflector of his grace. Because what we know about God's grace, it is the most powerful force in all of creation. It's got power beyond our knowing. Just some examples of Grace is power. You know, God's grace has the power to change our dark and despairing lives to lives of hope and promise. You know, God's grace has the power to change our doubts to faith. God's grace has the power to fill our emptiness with meaning and purpose. The grace of the Lord has the power to change self-doubts to confidence. And the grace of the Lord has the power to change mortal life into immortality so that we might enjoy his presence forever. God's grace is the power, most powerful force in all creation. All that God has, he gives to you as a gift. Now, uh, there are some times when I think, okay, how about my ambition? You know, I've worked hard for what I have. Oh, no, power and might are gifts of God, even our ambition, everything we have. I mean, everything is a gift of God's grace. I I do need to pause in life, and, you know, I need need to go camping uh, time to time or so that I can just be out in the great sanctuary, the beauty of the outdoors, and, and, and focus on God, and then I want to see some of his gifts, and so I pick them up, his gifts of grace, and I look at them. Oh, they don't seem to be a lot, but aren't they amazing? I was thinking, camping... Well, you, you know, this summer I, I was realizing you can't roll out of bed when you're camping. You've got to stand up out of bed, which is becoming more and more of a problem for me, especially if you've got to stand up halfway in a pup tent and kind of get out. But just for fun, I uh, want to think about the Lutheran Church and the foundational principle of grace alone. And uh, God loves some fun, I think, and just so, so fun, I Thinking about camping and the Lutheran Church, I'd like to tell you my favorite camping story about a couple of my favorite people, uh, Oli and Lena. You may be familiar with them. They 
Uh, they had never been camping before, but they went camping this summer too uh, at a very nice campground up by Alexandria, Minnesota, where you may know where that's at. And Well, before they went, Lena was a little bit nervous. Uh, she'd never gone camping before, a bit worried about the toilet facilities. And so she thought that she would get in touch with the campground owner and ask about the toilets, but she thought, I can't say that word, not on the phone. So she decided to write him a letter and ask about them, and then she remembered that where she grew up around Fargo, North Dakota, uh, where they used to call a toilet an LC, short for lavatory commode. So she simply asked in her letter to the campground owner whether they had an LC. And the campground owner was kind of confused by these initials. He, he thought, well, she must mean the Lutheran Church. And so he wrote Lena the a letter back and said, Dear Lena, I'm happy to inform you that there is an LC located just nine miles north of the campground. He said, I realize that this is kind of far if you're used to having one nearby and go regularly, but it is really a nice LC and it seats 200 people. <laughs> the last time my wife and I went was six months ago and it uh, was so crowded we had to wait 20 minutes to get a seat. Uh, we can hardly wait to go again. Some people like it so much they bring their lunch and make a day of it. There's going to be a fundraising dinner soon in the basement of the LC, and they're going to use the money to buy more seats. <laughs> it hurts me that I can't go more often like I know I should, but it gets more and more difficult when you get older, especially in the winter. So please come down and stay at our camp. Maybe we can go with you the first time. You go to the LC and we'll sit with you and I'll introduce you to all the nice folks at the LC because after all, people love being together at the Lutheran Church, right? We love being together at the Lutheran Church because we're a church of grace. Grace happens here. We want to reflect more than anything else the gifts that God has instilled in us, those gifts of grace to everyone we meet and in everything we do. I want to talk more about also that we are saved by grace alone. This is our number one strength as a church. We proclaim this, but I want to, I've loved, I want to talk about that uh, in a little bit, grace alone, using roots, relevancy, and renewal, just as a guideline uh, to talk, because I don't know if you've noticed this fall, grace, relevance, relevancy, and renewal is uh, the pathway to abundant life, and let me explain to you, if we get in touch with our roots, we get in touch with our purpose in life, which is our relevancy, that brings relevancy. When we live out our purpose in life, we're renewed and we renew the world. That's, it's, it's the steps of an abundant life. I was thinking personally, that's true. You know, when we as people get in touch with our roots, who do we ultimately get in touch with? God, our maker. When we get in touch with our maker, we get in touch with the person who knows why he made us, our purpose, which gives us relevancy. And our purpose is this, from beginning to end in Scripture, that we're to love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. And when we go about doing that in life, what happens when we share God's love? We're renewed, and so is the world. I was thinking about our country. We have some foundational principles, some roots. Uh, we all went to class, you know, and we looked at the Declaration of Independence. And uh, the principles, the roots of our country are these, right? It was established so that we might have a life, L liberty, is that it? And? The pursuit of happiness. Declaration says that we were created by a creator who gave us rights. The right for life and life is sacred and we'll protect it. 
no matter what. We hold life to be sacred. We have liberty, freedom. We believe that God created us. Read the Declaration that all should live in freedom. And so we protect it and we fight for it. It's what brings our life relevancy as a country. Pursuit of happiness, we can define that in many ways, but the opportunities God wants us to have. He wants us to become everything He created us to be. He wants us to have the freedom to become that. Isn't that incredible? Roots, relevancy, and renewal is the steps to abundant life. This is true for our church as well. Our foundational principle upon which we were built is that we are saved by grace alone. Before the Reformation, it was believed and practiced and taught that we were saved by works righteousness. That somehow we could work our way to heaven or buy our way to heaven. Maybe we could talk our way into heaven. Uh, no. Scripture says it's by grace alone. Luther claimed this when he discovered it uh, for him in his own life that he was saved by grace alone. He said it's only for us to believe it. It's a gift. And then he went out into the whole world risking his life proclaiming that we are saved by grace alone. And you know something? There's a slide that I want to show you right now. It's from Worms, Germany. It marks the spot where Martin Luther was put on trial for taking a stance that we are saved by grace alone. He was tried by princes and kings and by popes. And he was asked to recant his stance on grace alone. And he said, I cannot. Here I stand. He was that day declared a criminal. He was now free to be done away with by anyone who desired. Luckily, he was saved to the Wartburg Castle. Our roots, grace alone. Our relevancy, take a stand. Stake your life on it. That it's only by Christ alone on the cross that we are saved. And share it. And as you do, you will be renewed. And so will the world. God's blessings to all of you. May God continue to grace you moment by moment. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue to worship this morning as we sing together.